Welcome back to a Tom Bar Rex. I'm a Tom Bar. This is my reaction channel. Of course, on tap we have today when Tyson challenged his biggest opponent, Mike Tyson. 2.0. Let's check it. Several people seem to think that he's George Foreman, but he's stronger than George Foreman. BLTV. He's Joe Fraser, but he's faster and he's more powerful than Joe Fraser, and he's Rocky Marciano, but he's almost 30. Yo, look at this quality. That's the good old days. He pounds heavier right than Rocky there. Marciano, so that combination, I think, both it's pretty well for Mike Whoa. Tyson. Welcome back to another big fight. More this get LTV Classic. Yes, Tyson has the antenna. Yo, this man is sweating like he just came out the song. The of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded feet. On today's video, unguarded we look back meat, at the night huh? Tyson fought. Tough. Jose Revolta was an annoying way to look. A prime Mike Tyson found most difficult to carry all as he absorbed more than 200 punches from our mic and a by the horse's oh mouth, God, not only the biggest funny. man in his career, but all Look at the crazy ass. As the six foot six Cuban heavyweight Jose Rivalta withstood inconceivable damage inflicted bink, by the most bink, ruthless bink. version of Iron Mike. That man knocked his mouthpiece out. Ever seen. One of the great heavyweight slugfests of all time. Let's bink. get right to it. Uh oh, that was before the eye tattoo. At five foot ten and a half, Mike Tyson was significantly the shortest heavyweight contender ranked by the Ring Magazine's top ten in the, the fall deadliest. of '86. Many the boxing deadliest. fans will remember this era as the New Age, the land of the giants, with the large majority of top contenders and champions from here on out standing in excess of six foot four. That's real the boxer, Carrera, right there. A heavyweight boxer called the Monster. Why are they feeling that <laughs> this man back like this? There have been many tall contenders and champions in the past, that with Jess Willard and Primo Carnero being like prime great. examples of towering fighters often branded as unskilled behemoths, circus acts, whose achievements in the sport are credited strictly to their advantage in size and weight. That's why they got weight classes. That notion changed drastically with the introduction of world-class trainers such as Eddie Fitch and Emmanuel Stewart, who were fixated on not only utilizing the physical advantages a sizable fighter possesses, but more making their boxing skills comparable to the guys a half a foot or so shorter than them. But right now, Lennox Ooh. Lewis is giving an old fashioned woman to David Cooper. Ooh, concussion, Once Lewis became the dominant force in the division, big men have ruled the roost ever since. When I was young, I used to always say, God, I'm just, I'm just a midget. I'm never going to grow. I'm never going to be anything because I'm too short to do any kind of sports, anything. But then, you know I mean? I started believing in myself and well, things worked out right. Here, right here. Jose Revolta was one of those classic, long-rangey fighters that dominated the amateur boxing circuit in his teens due to his size being perfectly cohesive with the classy dance-like Yo, boxing. if you ever ran or exercise on a beach, you know how hard it is to get through that sand. Two skills taught to him at the home of Cuban boxing in the States, the Fifth Street Gym in Miami. My tights, here I come. Here I come, baby, baby. By the time Jose turned pro in 1982, he was the number two rated amateur heavyweight in America, and he used his skills to defeat. Let me just say something. Why does every, like every athletic sporting event why does everybody look like they covered in baby oil and sweat like they just came out the sauna? They just came from a rainstorm. Now, I know that sweat come from putting in that work, but come on, we ain't got to be shining like we doggone glistening, doggone twilight. I don't understand that. And it be every sport. Beat the usual suspects of journeymen, such as David Jacko and Rick Keller in the coming years. Well, he goes up against Jose Revolta, who has to be considered a threat. Jose was robbed of his first moment of genuine boxing notoriety in his 1985 clash with the soon-to-be heavyweight champion, James Bone Crusher Smith. Everyone Bone outside Christian. of two of the three ringside judges felt he won with relative ease. However, dubious decisions are unfortunately a part of the game, and as many fighters have displayed in the past... That's true, just like we're having Laura. Asked, early setbacks can either make or break a character. And during the Tyson buildup in July 1986, Jose seemed to be peaking, not only physically, but mentally, certain he would be the man to stop Tyson's 25 fight unbeaten streak. There's a man that could beat Mike Tyson. You know what? I watched, I think, I don't think it was BLTV. No, it wasn't BLTV that did a um, uh, video on this. I watched the video um, about the history of undefeated boxers. And you would be surprised that over 90%, roughly 90% of boxers in today's 
sport, like, are undefeated. That's more than any other sport in the world. Which I don't even... And, and they go into a um, good explanation. I can't remember who made it. If I can, I put the link in for the video below. But it's crazy that no, that almost over 90% of bosses are undefeated. This is Jose Ribalta. It's going to be a lot of people surprised down in Miami when he knocks him out. When Mike Tyson hurts a guy, he puts Not him to sleep. Not this prime music. If he tags Jose, I hope he don't think Jose is going to lay down. He just better be ready to take another shot. But I'm not going to take no credit away with him, but he's to this day, he hasn't faced anybody that can punch like Jose. Jose, Jose, Jose. You just shaded every boxer before him. He's never been in there with a fighter like me. me. Watch me fight. Devastation. And give him a slow beating, nearly death. Yes, Tyson has the nearly death. Who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded meat. Tyson met Rivalta at the Trump Plaza Hotel in Atlantic City on August 17, 1986. The tension between the two created a legendary atmosphere among the lucky 1,000 people in attendance. Tyson's snarly grimaces were met Rivalta's death-defying eyes. It was clear to the viewing Crazy, audience baby. that they were in for a special night of heavyweight boxing action. Just Ooh. as expected, Tyson is right in the chest of Rivalta. Ooh! But all time. Ooh! Classic right hook to the body, right uppercut combo put Rivalta down at the end of the that second round. Too. The sheer power of the uppercut would have been enough to send 99.9% of every it. human on earth to the shadow realm. Yet, to the crowd's surprise, Rivalta made it back to his feet with enough stability to slug it out until the that end. That man knocked his brain up and down. The fluid is swirling. The sheer speed and power that Tyson possesses and possessed back then is unbelievable. Still hold them kidney shots. Good left to the chin. Jesus. Look, got that clinch. He needed a break. He needed a break. He needs Acknowledging milk. Rivalta's resilience, Tyson elected for the water in the basement approach in the next few rounds, hammering Jose to the body to try and soften his core. Ooh. And you could tell that's where he's going. He leaning. He leaning and showing you that's where he's going. Ooh. Ooh. But he could level change so smooth. Like butter. Ooh. Go to that body, drop them hands, come to your chin, my God, killing it. Ooh. Hey, Rebolta got a little, he got a little shot in there, I seen that. Little chin shot. Ooh. But Tyson just kept coming. It's like he took that on the chin and just kept punching. I know it did. It hurt me, and I ain't even in the fight. Tyson took his attacks upstairs by the end of the seventh, boxing with the same ferocity as he Ooh. did in the first, throwing with the speed and power of a man that has barely broken right, sweat. Does he hit? Ooh, that combo! Did you see? Did you see that combo? Mouthpiece is out. Mouthpiece gone. Tyson seems shocked that Rivalta had made it to his feet again. Yet, instead of taking his feet off the gas and cruising to a unanimous decision, he wanted to entertain the fans by closing the show. Ooh. Ooh. 
catch a fighter. Ooh. Bink, bink. Oh! Knocked his head off his shoulder. Knocked his head off his shoulder. Tyson knocked out Revolta in the 10th in a manner I'm sure the great Customato himself would have been proud of. But as Ooh. always, HBO's Larry Merchant was underwhelmed by his performance and grilled the aspiring champ in the post-fight interview. Of course, somebody, of course he was. This guy was a tougher nut to crack than you thought, I bet. Very enough, he had his mind concentrating to go fight and he did well and I commend him very daily. What made him so tough? The fact that he fought back, unlike the other fighters who've taken you this far? Most definitely, he fought back and he had, um, I... See, Tyson knew what he was doing. He said, I ain't finna get into no battle with you. Cause he, are, he already knew that man intentions. In his mind, he wasn't gonna get knocked out. But as you notice, he was knocked down, but wasn't knocked out. Cause he had his mind conscious of that. Are there too many expectations of you? And then, so that mean you shading every other boss of my Tyson on fault. Some of the greats he done fought. So not only you trying you trying to shade Tyson, but you inadvertently shading them other people as well. And people don't take too kindly to that. Mike, do you think that if you don't, you're in a bind that if you don't knock him out early, if you knock him out early, everybody says the other guy was a bum. If it, if it goes this far, everybody says you weren't, you can't hit that hard. Basically, what you thinking? You just trying to say everybody else staying there, but you the only one thing. Well, what can I say? This happens. <laughs> Tyson showed a lot of class in his response by right. simply acknowledging that Rivalta was as tough and game as they come. In an interview for Ring Magazine in 2014, Tyson named Rivalta as the most durable fighter he'd ever faced, along with the strongest, claiming that the Cuban was very strong in clinches. His professional record, right. wins. He, he took them shots on the chin and then bite it. If Tyson had never met Rivalta, I doubt that there'd be even a single person who would have expected him to put up such a brave effort against the prime Mike Tyson, because after the match, his career went more or less down the drain certifying himself as a bona fide journeyman by his mid-twenties. Mm. Rivalta retired after five straight losses in 1999. That mindset. Yet to this day, he still wants a rematch with Tyson. In A rematch? No, no, he gotta be trolling. In fact, his Facebook page is littered with non-stop call-outs to the point of obsession. Y'all, you... have y'all seen Mike Tyson training footage right now? I'm talking about if you go on his page today and see this man training footage, and the training footage I just watched in these few seconds of Revolta, ain't no way this man is gonna think he's coming out alive. Usually, I'd laugh off these callouts, but with the current landscape in the game today, you just never know who will return to the ring. That man don't need to go in there with no Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson kill that man right now. Mike Tyson will straight obliterate that man right now. No disrespect to Revolta because I can't get in there and do that. I can't do it. So, no disrespect at all. But have you compared and trained the footage to my, go on Mike Tyson Instagram and, and go on Revolta Instagram and see who you think will win, okay? That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say about that. This video will be in the description below. And like I said, if I can find that video about the uh, statistics of an undefeated boxer, I will definitely put it on here um, on the description below. So I'll see y'all later. Peace.